everything right and yep. But here's my friend Dave, he's a good guy yeah. and he's got nowhere to live, so I'm gonna let him live in my boat for a while. Survivor mode. Yeah, we are. You know, yep. we're exhausted. You and I, emotionally, yep. physically, the yep. thing we went through. There's no yep. word to describe. Yep, it's incredible. It is. All right, guys. Breakfast is served. Nice. We got a rescue and a bagel egg and cheese sandwich. Heck yeah, man. That looks that looks amazing. Help! We need help. That's what we woke up to this morning. It was uh, right at seven o'clock and a lady came over on her dinghy and said that her boat was being pulled under because it was attached to a sunken boat. And so we uh, jumped out of bed. Joe heard it at the same time we did <clears throat> of her banging on the side of the hull. And we uh, got in the dinghy and unfortunately didn't get any footage of this because it was so uh, quick and such a panic. But um, so Basi the same style boat that we do. Yeah, basically, uh, the mooring ball next to us over here uh, is a 2011, 2011 Leopard 44 that has been demasted. And everything else is on the boat's working fine. But right next to her uh, is a sunken vessel. And with the change of tide, her rudder was stuck on the sunken vessel and or sail drive. And it was pulling her boat down. So she came over needing some help to get off of that mooring ball, get her boat unstuck from the sunken boat and get over to another mooring ball. So that's what we, uh, we did first thing this morning. We were able to get her off safely, get her over to the other boat. Um, we talked to them for a little while. They live here on Fort Myers Beach and their house has been demolished. Um, their boat's been badly damaged, but it's livable and it has a generator and all the comforts uh, of, of home. So that's where they're staying now. And uh, it's, uh, it's been an eerie morning. I mean, we just hear kind of fire alarms in the background of the buildings. Uh, they're still going off. We heard them all night last night sleeping. And you hear, yeah, you hear the rescue crews going back and forth. Yep. And then right here is these life jackets. There's two of them. There's a yellow one and a red one that's marking where that boat was. So that leopard was right there on that mooring ball. And now we have helped them go to that mooring ball right there. That's the leopard 44 that's been demastered. So they are now safe on that mooring ball. If not, it's just two overhand knots just kind of pulled together, but just feel how tight that is. It's insane. Oh my goodness. Just feel, that'll never come apart. Um, and then, so tell me how that happened. Oh, well, what's interesting is, um, you know, during the storm, I had this a little bit tighter. And then I realized that, you know, as the water was coming up and we saw how high it went, it went 15 feet. I think the water was, if I were to put my hand there, like easily this high off where it is now. And so when that happened, the ball that's out here is like, you know, four or five feet underwater, I couldn't see it, but it just was chaos, like river rapids uh, over top of it. But the lines were tight, so I had to come out and then loosen these lines, let out some of the slack so that the boat didn't tip forward. Um, and when I did that, the pressure on these lines was insane, uh, but I was luckily able to sort of let them go one at a time, let it out. Otherwise, I would have lost the boat and it would have broken off because that pressure was so intense. You can see what it did, that's just chafing, but the pressure was so intense. That's how close I was to coming off. And uh, just absolutely crazy. But obviously, as you can see, I put out six. I had out eight lines just to make sure because people that didn't, they're in the mangroves, you know, they're they're over there. And you'd be there so if that would have come I, loose. If I wasn't on the boat to do that, I'd be there too because these lines would have snapped under that pressure without loosening them. So yeah, I mean, it was absolutely crazy and it was something that, I don't know, I don't want to live through again, but I'm glad I, I made it. And you can see that extra rope that sort of went around the, uh, the line here um, 
that did, wasn't put there by me. And see the way that it's tangled around everything. It really protected, protected the boat. Sort of divine protection just happened to come right there. Absolutely crazy. So you were quick, spared. I was spared. Yeah, and we're gonna do fun, good things and live a good life now. So I'm excited. <laughs> this is awesome. But yeah, it's a close call, and you can see around that it wasn't such a lucky experience for everybody else. And the fact that, you know, the storm is strong enough to knock down a mast when I was right next to that boat just goes to show how strong it was. And they had their sails off completely, uh, off the main, too, so it's crazy. But, yeah, harrowing and it's tough to look at, but I got emotional when I saw how tight these lines were and how tight that knot was because that had my life on it. And I tied it and it held. And it's the simplest knot you can imagine. It's like tying your shoes, two of them, to pull together to go up on each other, and they never broke. And that'll never come apart. I'm never taking that knot off, nor could I. <laughs> it saved your life. It did. It did. Well, I'm Louis, and my wife, Jose, and a little lab, this guy, and a little cat, June. And your boat name? My boat name is After Ten. And what type of boat is it? It's a 45 foot Columbia sailboat, a sloop. Monohull. Monohull, yes, that's correct. And you're the blue boat that came off your mooring and then went by the footage that I got. Exactly. And you guys were on the boat at the time. And yes, crazy. yes, yes. We're down below. And then, then I'll let, well, I'll let uh, Tracy continue. Okay, um, my son and I were on our 61 foot Hatteras. We were moored on mooring number one, which is right next to the bridge over there, right in front of Louie. And I guess Joe was behind Louie, right? Yep. Yeah. Okay. And I saw two catamarans back there. I didn't yep. know which one. But anyway, uh, that's that's the beginning of my story. Yep. Yeah. And I'm Joe Schoenwolf, and then I was on the catamaran and, and filmed all this happening. So. We'll go back to the first incident, which the storm picked up around, I think, 11 o'clock, and then it started to get right. serious around 2 or 3. Mm -hmm. And um, what, what happened was, when I looked out my window, the first boat that I saw that broke loose was Tracy's boat, and it was the Hatteras. And I got it all on film, and I, I, all I saw, from my perspective, was an epic save, because I saw the boat drifting, I saw the mooring ball attached to you, and I saw some black smoke coming out the back, and I saw you put that thing in gear and head back into the right direction. But then I was like, well, what's he going to do? So that's your story, right? So what happened? So anyway, uh, we, my son and myself were up on the fly bridge actually tying down a, a, a kayak up there, and I heard a snap. And I knew when I saw Louis boat getting closer that we broke loose. So we ran down. Luckily, I had the engines uh, already running. And uh, basically, it took three tries to try to get away from Louis, Louis boat. And then um, I believe Torgerson's house was right over across the way. We almost hit that. And we had very, very limited visibility. So Randy was my eyes. He was telling me, back up or go forward. And like I said, it took three tries just to get turned around because the wind was just kept pushing the bow around. Like we saw it. We and, had some uh, video. I saw it. Yeah, yeah, I wasn't. Yeah. Incredible. So anyways, <laughs> basically, we finally got turned around and made it around over by the bridge and came up the other side of the bay over there by the shrimp boats. So what made you and, go that way versus out? Just curious. Well, out, you know, we would have ended up with no place to turn over there and it, Know, there's a lot of shallow water back over there in the bay there so the best thing i could think of was the hurricane bay back there which is it's called hurricane bay because on small storms little boats can go back there and get out of the weather but the weather was uh was still a factor back there when we got there so basically when we got there um we just tried to do circles and figure eights anything we could do um, for hours right? for five hours at five, least five hours yeah and um you it's a very it's nothing. very narrow back there we couldn't see anything but we were going off the gps i had it blown up just so i could see exactly where we were back there so it was hard every turn was hard trying to get around backing up and all yeah stuff. you're effectively a giant sail with we that were, boat, yeah. right so yeah. fight yeah. to yeah. hurricane things were blowing by us houseboats were blowing by us there's a house blew by us um it was there was a couple of markers out there that we I'm, I'm sure that we probably knocked them down. I didn't feel anything, but because after a while when the surge came in, the markers were underwater and we couldn't even see them, but I could see them on the GPS and I just couldn't avoid them, I think. I, 
I don't know. I don't remember hitting him or feeling it, but maybe you went over. <laughs> yeah, we probably did. Yeah. I mean, I see, I see them now at low tide. Um, anyways, uh, finally after five hours, uh, I lost power on one engine, uh, which made it totally impossible to maneuver. So, Plan C was uh, run the boat up on the mangroves, um, just get it up in there. So that's where it still sits. So we're about three quarters of the way into the mangroves right now with really no hope to get out unless there's another hurricane come by real soon in the surge. And so you've been sitting there for since, now going uh, on over 72 hours. Oh no, it's been since Wednesday morning. Yeah. So you and your son are living on the boat right we're now? We're living in on the, the boat. In the mangroves. In the, we're in, in the, the mangroves. mangroves. We've got, um, We've got a little generator. We can't run our big generator because uh, the intake is out of the water. Um, so we're running off a little generator and just conserving gas because it's at a premium right now out here. And um, running that at night just to have a fan and to charge our cell phones, basically. Could you see the mangroves whenever you... Um, we could see them when we got within about... 30 or 50, 30 feet of them. Yeah. 30 feet. When we and, were back there. Yeah. When and were the you, storm. It was a whiteout back there. It was. Yeah. And because of the storm surge, how high of the main, like how much mangrove could you actually see? Um, you mean when we were out there doing circles? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, like I said, we could just see, barely see the outline of the mangroves. Okay. Uh, but like it was they're... just the top, the top tip of them, right? Yeah, no, so we could see them all. Because we, got... we were getting so close to them, basically. Yeah. You know, yeah. Uh, we could see them all, but it took, we got to get real close to see them. Are you, you're further in the mangroves now than what you realized yeah, whenever well, you went in, is that right? What was happening was uh, we got into the mangroves just a little bit. Like I said, we only had one engine, so I just idled it into the mangroves. And as soon as I would let off on that engine, it would the wind would blow right through the mangroves and blow us off. Right. And my biggest problem was uh, Kelly Brothers has a barge right, right yeah. back there, yeah. and, and that's it. exactly the way we were drifting. So if I drifted out of those mangroves, we were going to crash into that barge. Yeah. And that'd be like crashing into that bulkhead over there. Solid steel. Solid. Yeah. 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 That didn't move. You yeah. talked about so a Plan C. That was Plan C with the and mangroves. And yeah. in this. Utter chaos. <laughs> well, the fact that you had an A, B, and C plan in this utter chaos, help me understand like that process of that quick thinking between you and your son when, first of all, you broke off the mooring ball and here you are floating in the middle of all of this utter chaos to be able to think rationally and say, I need to get out of the way of other boats so I don't crash into them. Mm -hmm. I need to hopefully try to protect myself so I'm not floating around everywhere. Right. And then also save mine and my son's life. Yeah. That's basically it. Yeah, it's a survival mode, basically. Yeah. You know, you do what you can. You know? Sure. Yeah. That's wow, that's amazing. And Louis, so so you broke off second, is that right? Well, I think so. Oh, at that point, I think it was like one after the other. Yeah, but we were all very right close here. to it because yeah. I saw him turning around. He was probably, I guesstimate, 20 feet away from my boat. Right. And my wife and I says, okay, this is it. We thought we were going to go down. Mm. And it's so black smoke, they say. <laughs> he's my the hero right there. <laughs> and so I'm sipping around, and then when he took off, I didn't know where you went that way. Yeah. And uh, so, I don't know, I, I can't say time, but not long after that, we heard a bang. And my... My attachment to the mooring ball is 45 ton load, and I'm um, sorry. And so that's not, that broke off. Now I'm free attached to that red sailboat, which we yeah, yeah. put it away yesterday. And uh, so that guy got me into the catamaran over there. So we're the three of us there. So I had already my plan, my first plan was I had my uh, anchor ready to go. Yeah. And I had a spare anchor on deck attached to a line ready to go. So at the end of the day, so when I drift away and I saw that I was released from these two guys, then I let go all my chain. Actually, not all my chain. I probably let go, um, I'm guessing 150 feet because I couldn't, you know. I of just your own hook. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, on my own hook. And then I stopped moving. Well, naturally, the wind was spinning us around, and I have a trace of it, how big I saw. And then I snagged another boat. And then for five hours, we were 
fighting, my wife and I, outside, try to eliminate all the damage, and then we're spinning around, and... Did you have your engine on? Oh, my, yeah, 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 my engine was on, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, no. so, Louis, I have recording of the actual Coast Guard call that you made while your boat just attached, disattached, so I'll play it real quick. But this is... Yeah, this launch, and we're with three other boats all our that's when you just dislodged. I got that on the video, so that's when I went up and started to record chills. you. Oh, my gosh. That gave me chills. Yeah. <laughs> that was during the action. That was, you know, you're, you're, I wouldn't, couldn't imagine because that was my biggest I was fear. scared to hit an, anybody else right now. Yeah. You know, at the end of the day, boats is boats. I knew that you were there. Actually, I didn't know that you lived there. Yeah. I knew he was there, and I was trying to say, just, I'm coming. I'm drifting. I'm coming at you, you know? You came so close to me, I literally could have reached out and touched your boat. Whoa. And uh, I didn't know what to I do. I saw I, that. I, I Did you see? I was wondering if you were in the cockpit because I was going to offer to throw a rope to you or something, but I didn't know if I could help you because I'll tell you, your boat was moving where it was oh. almost on its side. Yeah. And I just did, I felt helpless to help you, but I, I mean, I... There was nothing to do. Nothing to do, yeah, but I just I And I saw my... So bad with, you know, to get off your windlass, the chain to get off the windlass. Yeah. It takes a, you know, it takes a big thing to get it off. It doesn't go off that way. And then I heard my windlass was just releasing all the way to the end. I had a big bolt, and the bolt bent in the hole, and wow. that's what saved us. Wow. And everything, naturally, it's cracked in the front, my, you know. Yeah. But the point was, even with your anchor down and all of your anchor chain, you weren't holding in that current. No. Right? Not even close. Well, well, if there was nobody, I would have hold. Okay. So but then I, I connect to another guy. And there was nobody on this boat. And we've been fighting, and not fighting, you know, trying to keep, put a buoy there, put a bumper there, and try to minimize the damage. And for, I would say, four and a half hours, he was drudging a hole in the front, which I didn't know. His anchor was hanging down. Uh, at, after the fact, I saw that I had a hole six inches above the waterline, which I patched. Uh, but then when it was now, the way we were entangled ourselves, he was hitting the side of my boat. Now windows were crashed, you know, so, you know, you got, and the wife, my wife, I call it the wife because I love her so much. And my wife says, uh, cut him loose. I said, I can't. And I can't, I was not able to. And then I, I, I was crying the whole way using my machetes. I don't even know these people and I'm really sorry. But there was, it was a boat or our lives. Because now I would have sunk right there. And we were prepped, everything was ready. We, we Everybody has our life jacket. The, the dog had his life that jacket. The, the cat was in our my little orange box. Uh, we had a bailout thing. <sighs> Two hits on one side, maybe 10 hits on the other side. Then that boat got released. I my mean, problem is not finished. Now I released the boat. Where's that boat gonna go? You know, everything goes in your mind, you know? You, Man, now release somebody. Am I gonna kill somebody else because I try to save myself? So nothing. I guess nothing happened because I don't. I don't know. I, actually, I, I don't know. I tried to find the boat. I could not find the boat. It's the red monohull. No, it, it was. It, it was it red? It was a. It was a like, similar size sailboat, but white and. Uh, yeah, I think it was like a 35, 37 yeah. quarter I, Benetton I or think, something like that. I think I saw that drift by us. Yeah. yeah. During the middle of the storm, there was a big, big sailboat. Sounds familiar. The, the but so nobody was on board. The, 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 the solar no. panel. We we got snag everywhere. I was scared that he was going to release my my stay. You know, if I lose my stay, then I lose my mast, and more problem. And so finally, after a while, I was able to. I knew that my uh, windlass was going down, and if that released, now I have. Only my 45 pound, the other one was 85 pound, on the line, not on chain. I was, so I said, I, I, I was steering the boat, the buoy was on my port side, and I was steering the boat with the engine going forward and turning or stop it, reversing, not to have any jerk on the mooring ball. So not to lose my chain. Now I'm wrapped around this buoy Finally, the uh, wind changed for some reason, still blowing a little bit, you know. 
That was the main problem. And that, the, current, the current was running one way. The yeah. tide was running one way. We the had, wind was blowing the other way. It was way. an incoming tide so, till 3 o'clock. So you exactly. had the incoming water against the wind this right. way. And it caused these to be four or five, six exactly. foot waves. Yeah, we're here. six foot high. Meanwhile, the yeah. backs of all the boats are facing again, facing with the wind. Right. So the major wind, the, it was just like a like a big wind sail. Chaos. Yeah. yeah. yeah, it was yeah. Like, and then if anybody the wanted. The were facing into the wind the whole time. Yeah. I don't think we would have had this problem. And no, that's right. it. That's you know, exactly right. what I'm thinking, yeah. too. And I that's, keep thinking with your with your snapping, that snap that you heard was metal. Yeah. That was metal because yeah. your mooring ball came with you. I yeah. know. That was the metal chain that I, I looked, I dove Randy, on it the day before. Yeah. It was this thick. It's it's category yeah. five rated mooring yeah. balls. Yeah. And they, you know, this, this mooring ball proved that they were yeah. worthy of that title. Yeah. Not yeah. all were that good. And your boat's a big boat. But that, that was solid metal steel that, that snapped, which is yeah. incredible the amount of power yeah. and pressure right. on that. Yep. Yeah. Well, that was the back, the, you know, actually the, the stern of my boat was facing the wind. Yeah. So I was trying to actually, just before that happened, before, uh, about a half hour before that, I tried to get the boat maneuvered around so the ball wouldn't be on my bow, like over here, with the bow going that I way. I was so scared that you would, and, with uh, a line that was falling No, no, there. I was just trying to get get into the wind, face into the wind, and I just couldn't get it around. You know, that's and it, you probably didn't let out like a lot more line we just couldn't because, yeah, we could because you're so because there's other boats near you yeah, and if you would have left them plus, out yeah plus we had that sign that was there with the two pilots yeah, the yeah. entrance to the uh, matanzas base so, me there, too. too i mean i have boats i tried all to get on me. a different mooring but they wouldn't let me they said no you're gonna the best room mooring here because it has the biggest swing ratio right and that's what i'm worried about the swing ratio sure. It's like a, either the top of a dock or part of a house that floated away. And this is what Tracy was describing and floated by him. Because, I mean, you see this thing coming at you. I've seen the jet skis coming at me. Like, it's scary. It's, uh, it's unreal that this is somebody's part of somebody's house that's now stuck in the mangroves. And it, could you imagine that's probably, you know, 20,000 pounds coming at you in a full force hurricane? It's crazy. It's crazy, it's crazy that it's all intact. It just, uh, there's even walls on the inside there, still there. Yep. A little over a year ago, uh, we actually met some of our really good friends now um, in the cruising community, uh, cruising or sailing Ajax. And we drove all the way down to stay down here and just have dinner with them. and. Um, they gave us some really good advice prior to us buying the boat. And this is the dock that, uh, that we came to with them because their boat was on the morning here. And this is the, uh, the city dinghy dock and it's gone completely. Anything. I had no choice. Well, yeah, exactly. And I thought that if water did come in here, it would be blocked from the main stream, and that it would, and it did. It wrapped around here, so I never got direct flow. Like the car's not even scratched because nothing hit it because it was just the residual. The problem is the water went up to here, and the whole thing was underwater. water. 